What's up guys, Bryce Smith here, here to talk to you guys about some mobility pieces as we kind of approach this holiday season. I want to give you guys some really simple things that you can play with, with your mobility to help with impingement of the shoulders, help with some of the depth issues that a lot of us face with regards to the squat. And they're super simple concepts. Squat holds. Squat holds are going to unlock a lot of those tissues of the ankles, the knees, the hips, and, and the thoracic or the upper back. And so spending time at the bottom of a squat and accumulating time throughout each day is definitely going to help you kind of fine tune some of those tissues, help with digestion. There's been a lot of different research coming out with, with squat holds and unlocking some of the fascia lines down below the equator that are definitely going to help with optimizing your overall health. And so starting off, you know, check in with yourself. See what your squat looks like. Are your knees able to stay in line with your ankles? Do your hips load back and eventually down? What's going on with the verticality of your torso? Are you getting rounded like the Hunchback of Notre Dame? Or are you able to maintain a pretty good posture? Check in with the weight distribution in your feet. Are you staying in midfoot the whole time? Or do you get all the way in your toes? Or then do you get all the way in your heels? We never want to be like on two ends of the spectrum. We want to try to hang out somewhere in the middle, especially with weight distribution in the foot. And that'll really translate to like force output on the bikes, right? The assault bike, the C2 bike. That'll really translate to weight distribution in Olympic weightlifting specifically. When the bar is pulling you forward, you don't want to get yanked to those toes, but you also don't want to be way back in your heels. You want to be right in that middle ground so you can receive the bar appropriately. And so Squat holds are going to be huge, you know, depending on where you're at with your squat mobility. Um, a couple customizations or some modifications you can toss in or maybe taking some 10 pound metal plates, placing them on the floor if, if you're somebody that has super tight ankles. And that can be a place that you start to accumulate some time. I would suggest playing with 30 seconds at a time and see if you can overall incorporate that throughout your day, different times, whether you're on the phone, typing on the computer, spending time with your kids, just hanging out, brushing your teeth, those are all good times when you can sit in the squat. 30 seconds to a minute at a time and see if you can accumulate five to seven minutes a day. It seems like a lot until you just kind of play with it and you realize how much benefit that you're receiving from simply just sitting at the bottom of the squat. So that's something that I highly recommend for those of you that are very tight in the hips, face digestive issues, struggle with squat depth, have very tight ankles or knees, or even have knee pain. We should be able to fold at the knees and travel through a full range of motion. And typically, that we, we start to struggle with that because of cars, because of sitting in chairs, sitting in desks, where it limits our range of motion at all times. The next thing I want to kind of piggyback on or, or, or jump to is impingement of the shoulders. We've got to use this fascinating concept on this big rock that we live on called gravity. Gravity can be a huge you know, advocate for optimizing healthy shoulders, and so just hanging from the pull-up bar. Um, for some of you, starting off, hanging might be a little bit too aggressive if we don't have very stable shoulders, and so you can even hang and gently have your tippy toes on the ground so you have a little bit of support there. And then as you get better, you try to lift your feet off of the ground completely. I would start off with 20 to 30 seconds at a time, and then play with that over the course of a day and try to accumulate two to three minutes hanging from a pull-up bar or hanging just in general. It can be from a tree, it can be from you know, something in nature, from, from like a light post or something that's obviously safe for you. It will also help to enhance some of your grip strength, which will translate to other gains and benefits within the fitness space as well. But bilateral hanging, meaning both arms, is not the only way we can play. We can also go unilateral and hang with just one arm and so for some of you guys that have very tight lat, very tight pec, maybe really tight pieces of the rotator cuff muscles or traps that you know potentially cause issues if you're somebody that's at the computer or holding something throughout the day, hanging with, with one arm could be really good. And you can always use the other arm to kind of balance on, on the rig or on a post or have a buddy help you out. And so, so far we've talked about the bilateral hang. We've talked about the single arm hang. You can also incorporate a supinated grip. So if you look at the cover of every anatomy book on the planet, it's external rotation with the palms facing forward, the shoulders retracted and depressed. And so this is a very hard shape because most things in our life, grabbing a barbell, grabbing a steering wheel, most of these things are pronated grip pieces. 
And so oftentimes with athletes in the gym, the supinated grip is really hard. Well, that's immediate feedback for us that there's something going on at the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist. Maybe we can look back at the scapula and see what kind of movement imbalances we have going on there. And so supinated grip hangs can be another great place to really enhance shoulder positioning, scap function, and then get rid of some of the impingement. Um, simultaneously, if the supinated grip is a little bit too hard, but the pronated grip is a little bit easier, you're welcome to hang from the rings and then play around with some gentle supinated and pronated movement while hanging on the rings to help sculpt and kind of craft the shoulder joint a little bit, or also known as the glenohumeral joint. And so these are two very simple things that you guys can incorporate pre or post workout. Once again, reiterating from the beginning, the squat hold, 20 to 30 seconds at a time. Try to get a cumulative total of five to seven minutes there. And then, as I mentioned recently, just hanging from the pull-up bar, 20 to 30 seconds at a time. We have a few different options that we presented earlier in this video. And really playing with these things and having discipline and realizing the benefit from them. Simultaneously, for those of you that have very tight low backs or really tight hip flexors, hanging from the pull-up bar is going to provide traction in between each one of those intervertebral discs that sometimes get compressed or slightly out of position. And so I always make the joke that the pull-up bar is my, my real-life chiropractor. So give those things a shot. See if they help you live pain-free and really dial into having discipline with them because they're so simple, but the benefit is monumental. Give it a shot and let us know how it goes. Thank you, guys.